back again. How is everybody doing on their end? Welcome back to the Opinion Spot. And today on the Opinion Spot, guys, in honor of National Hispanic Heritage Month, which goes from September 15th to October 15th, I'm here to give you something that usually you guys expect another list. That list being some of my favorite Latino Hispanic characters in fiction, comics, you name it. So I'm giving you 20 today, guys, 20. Who could be on that list? You'll have to find out. This will not be broken up. We're just gonna go right through it. So we'll start with, we'll go backwards. We're gonna go 20 to number one. So sit back, relax, I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for watching as always. Let's do it, here we go. So first on the list, number 20, I cannot possibly not have a this character not on the list, and that character is none other than Zorro. Um, we gotta have Zorro on the list. Zorro, if we talk about the quintessential Spanish, Latino, Hispanic character of fiction, why not deal with pretty much one of the characters that started it all, Zorro? And who doesn't love De La Vega? Who doesn't love him? Who doesn't love his class, his his wit, his charm, and his way with a rapier? Come on. Got to have one of this. I'm just saying. Next on the list for number 19, we're going with none other than Vibe. I know there's a lot of people that don't like Vibe. Um, I know Vibe has gotten pretty, uh, very uh, big over the course of the few years thanks to Flash and shouts out to I'm um, forgetting the actor right off the top of my head shouts out to kind of putting him out there but I was pretty much a fan of Vibe from back in the day you know and, and, but then when the new 52 kind of came and they kind of revamped his powers and gave him more of a little oomph and gave a reason of why this guy is so dangerous and why he's one of the most powerful they made it like they went in detail now going on about he's that powerful he can disrupt the speed force and I was like okay I can now I can understand why when the government did their own version of the JLA the Justice League of America he was on that team but they haven't used Vibe DC has not used Vibe in a while in terms of comics but outside of that let's just go along I'm down no problem next on the list of course we're going to Lorena Marquez, Aqua Girl. Now, this is a character that I think a lot of people probably don't know. My fellow geeks, if you don't, um, Lorena was a, a really cool incorporation in terms of Aqua Girl. She was a part of the Teen Titans before the New 52. Um, she, her costume was really cool. It was really cool to have uh, a character known as Aqua Girl that really has no ties to Atlantis, but she had the ability to breathe underwater, all that kind of things. I remember when, I think she was from San Diego, if I remember correctly, it got sunk, got underwater for a while, and it, it was it was, it was was crazy, but she, she was a big part of the Teen Titans when Tim Drake was leading the team when he was still Robin. You know, uh, Cassie Sandsmark was on there. Uh, of sh sh uh, Static, people like that. It was a really good, she was a really good character. Unfortunately, DC has not used her in months, but she was a really cool character that I did enjoy and I wish they had kept her going. Next on the list, of course, um, is none other than uh, Sam Alexander, um, Nova. Look guys, I'm not, I don't hate Sam Alexander. There were a lot of people that used to think I hated him. My problem with Sam Alexander when he first came out was the fact that they really tried their hardest to try to make 
guys like me forget who the who Nova is. They kept pushing him, but but in some cases forgetting that there was another Nova before him. That being the uh, Nova Prime, which writer. But yeah, I mean Sam Alexander is cool. He is he's over the years he has started to gain my my appreciation even more. Um, it he's he's really kind of upped it now for me, and I'm like, okay, he's cool. You know, he he's still a little hothead from time to time, but now him being with the champions and hanging with other heroes is in his own age group, it has helped him. But he's still a little hothead, and you know, you gotta kind of calm that down, Sam. And yes, he is he he's Mexican, and I'm, I'm forgetting the other other nationality is. But yes, he he is a, a part of that. Uh, next on the list I gotta go is to Yo-Yo Rodriguez, aka uh, Slingshot. When she first intro was introduced in the Secret Warriors comic, I thought this was cool. I was like, okay, a speedster. Um, she is the daughter of a classic villain. I think she's the daughter of the Griffin. Um, a speedster, but like a slingshot, when it it flings back, what happened? It comes back. So wherever her point of origin was, she can sling back right to it. And Nick Fury used her very well in that when they would do like espionage missions to get, gain a target. Yo-Yo would go in, boom, and then grab that the asset and, and sling back. I thought it was really cool. They have, and they did introduce her in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I would really love to see her be back in the MCU. I'm just saying it would be cool. Uh, next up on the list, of course, is uh, what was this? Number uh, 15. Uh, number 15 is Robbie Robbie Reyes, the the last uh, Ghost Rider. Robbie Reyes has come a, a pretty long way. I did collect his uh, his series. It was okay. It it explained, you know, how why he's he's a lot different from the the, the brothers Johnny and and. Um, and Dan and other people who had the powers of like Zarathos, his powers came from a different point of origin. And was was also cool about him as a different Ghost Rider is he used a, a car instead of a motorcycle. Most most of the Ghost Riders had a motorcycle. He had a car, and he was perhaps a, I believe the youngest. And I loved his interaction with Johnny Blaze and Dan Kench and them saying like, if you ever need help, you know call to us will come. Uh, Robbie has really been uplifting. Um, he's an Avenger now. He, he's a part of the Avengers and things like that. So he's done a few things that a lot of the other Ghost Riders have not been able to accomplish. Being a part of Earth's Mightiest Heroes. But he is, he's good. Um, they have treated him pretty respectively. Um, and I, I really enjoy it. You know, I really enjoy uh, Robbie Reyes. Good character. Number uh, 14 on the list uh, will go to Victor Alvarez, Power Man. When he first came out, Victor is uh, Afro-Dominican. Um, so what, what makes Victor different than uh, Luke Cage, because remember, Luke Cage had the name Power Man. His powers are a lot similar to, I would kind of say, Danny, and that's who uh, really took Victor under his wing. Danny tried to help him, and they Marvel did a miniseries, a new Power Man. I remember when they did a, a Power Man Iron Fist uh, miniseries, and it, it was focused on Danny being the, you can kind of say, the master, while Victor was the, the quote-unquote Padawan trying to learn and try to uh, focus his powers. Basically, um, with Victor, it's more, it's chi as well. He he absorbs the chi around him up, you know, from the earth, people, everything, and it, it gives him his abilities. He's also, and he'll start glowing a different color. He'll go like a bright yellowish 
orange-like color. Um, he's he's also a part of the champions, so he's hanging around uh, heroes his own age, which I always like. I like the fact when you have heroes hanging around their old age. But he is an experienced. He's more. He's a little bit more experienced than other um, heroes because he had older Marvel mentors. Um, they do need to push him a little more, in my opinion. Um, but uh, Victor Alvarez is pretty good. He's a really cool character. I, I didn't mind him at all. Um, number 13 on the list goes to Jessica Cruz, uh, Green Lantern. Um, she was once called Power Ring. Um, Jessica, I, I love the character of Jessica because she truly is the embodiment of a Green Lantern, overcoming fear with willpower. And we all know the story behind Jessica, um, the, the trauma that she suffered through. And I thought DC did a great job of, of exploring that, giving her her story arc, even having her be uh, the dominant Green Lantern of Earth, as well as her partnership with Simon Boz. It really helped her overcome a lot of things and anxieties that she had. And so she really lived up to that Green Lantern monarch of willpower and all that. And I really enjoyed that, you know, uh, very much. And I love the fact that she, you know, she had, she didn't wear like the domino mask. It, it was like a, across her face, one side of her face. It was cool. And I like I like that. Jessica has really come a long way. Really good character. Uh, next on the list, I know um, you can consider also uh, Native American as well, but you gotta. I have to throw for number twelve on the list. I gotta throw um, Echo in there, Maya Lopez. Yes, her father is Native American. I believe he he was Cheyenne. I believe he was part of the Cheyenne Nation. Um, but her mother, I believe, was uh, Latino, I believe. Um, Echo, who is coming on the rise, you know, Marvel now, she is the wielder of the Phoenix. The Phoenix is in her. And last time before, last last time we saw Echo, Marvel kept killing her off. Marvel killed her off um, during, uh, she was out in LA, and that was, I remember when Moon Knight was out there, and she got killed there, and I was like, you bastard, like, why'd you kill her? Um, but eventually she came back, she's now, she has the phoenix in her, uh, we're about to see her, uh, we're about to see her in the, in the, the, uh, Hawkeye series coming out soon, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and as well as, as she's getting her own spinoff and now there's more rumors that Daredevil may show up in that and I'm like All is looking well for Maya Lopez um, Echo as y'all know she's deaf But she can read lips and her very much a mimic. She's similar to like um, Similar to like Taskmaster, but I would kind of say on a more fluid fluid way uh, but she's a real she's still a really cool character um, next on the list number 11 goes to Anya Corazon aka Spider Girl uh, uh, the 616 uh, Spider Girl now I have been a fan of this character since she first debuted in Amazing Fantasies when she was called Arena um, and she gained a lot of buzz during that. Marvel had put out, re, had reintroduced their Amazing Fantasy series, uh, which was a, a really good series because that was where we were introduced to new Marvel characters in the in the, the Marvel universe. These characters would be around. Arena was one, <coughs> uh, an, uh, a new Scorpion character. Who went under the name Scorpion and her, but your hand was had you know the sting. It was really interesting. Uh, out of all the new characters from that uh, relaunch of Amazing Fantasies, Arena really went somewhere, and the the introduction of her past and her parents, her mom, her father being Mexican, her mother being Puerto Rican, and she was the chosen one of this 
spider-like cult, and she had like a, it kind of felt a little bit like a, a Buffy and, and Giles mentality, and it was really cool, and then later on she became Spider-Girl, and she would use uh, Je Julia Carpenter's Spider-Girl design, and at first she didn't have powers because her powers came from this ma from magic, and then after Spider Island, she her powers stayed, and so she has everything. She can do everything a spider can, uh, but she's a good character. Um, it would be a blast to see her live action uh, in the MCU or somewhere. I don't I don't care, but I would love to see her. You know. Uh, next on the list, number ten. We're at the top ten now. Number 10, it goes to the darkness. Jackie Esticado himself. Um, who doesn't love the darkness? I, as most people, as most of you guys may know, um, I have preached about the Witchblade. I preach all the time about how the Witchblade is one of my favorite indie comics. It, it was one of my favorite indie comics. I love Sarah Pizzini always trying to get people into reading that series because it was really good. Well, Top Cow Image did another series that focused in that same universe with the darkness. Jackie Estacado was a hitman and uh, on his 21st birthday, he was hearing somebody tell him, don't have sex this night. And he would find out that it was the darkness. There were three big powers in the Top Cow universe, especially, and the, the Angelus, the Witchblade, and the Darkness. Uh, Jackie is one of them, and he wields this power. As long as he doesn't have sexual intercourse, he can't die, pretty much. Unfortunately, he kind of did die because Sarah Pizzini, the Witchblade, killed him. Uh, and I believe that they're about to bring him back, but the darkness, along with his powers, he's able to bring these darklings around him, and they they bring out your worst fears. The darkness has crossed over with characters like Batman, Superman, the Hulk. Um, it was it was great to see him. He's he's had a video game. I wasn't really too fond of that, uh, but. Jackie, there was a lot of people that were saying his name wrong, but it is Esticado. It is a, it's a Hispanic name uh, because I believe he's Italian and Hispanic, uh, but he's still a great character. Um, he had a, a child with Sarah Pizzini, um, their daughter Hope. And uh, yeah, it was, he's, he's a good character, nonetheless. Next on the list, number nine, we go to, I had to have this character on, I had to have this, this family legacy, and we're talking about the White Tigers. This family legacy, one of Marvel's first Puerto Rican, Hispanic uh, superheroes, the White Tiger family, Hector, Vanessa, uh, Angelina, Angela, 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 excuse me, and and uh, uh, Anya. Hector was the first. His niece, Angelina Del Toro, was the next, and the third to hold the title was Hector's sister, younger sister, uh, Anya. Um, the White Tiger is a really cool character, and I'm praying, praying that we see this character in the MCU someday because the power of that Jade Tiger Amulet, there's a freaking tiger god in there that gives the gives them their power. Um, Hector was killed by a man by the name of Gideon Mace. Anya, I mean, uh, his niece Angela was looking into his case, but his little sister is the one who really got the revenge. Um, think of White Tiger is similar to similar to Black Panther, but what if it's almost in a sense? What if Boss, the the the, the, the god that the well, Wakandans pray to, 
was always in them, in T'Challa, and she, he could tap into her to Baz's power and things like that. That's what you get with White Tiger. Martial artist, great uh, ally to characters like Spider Man. Great, uh, also a great. Uh, you can kind of say street level hero, uh, but still nonetheless, it's a family legacy. And I don't know about y'all, but I love seeing family legacy hero, a hero that is passed down from another generation of family. So we have Hector, his niece, and then his, his little sister. Next on the list, of course, for number eight, we are going with none other than my favorite person who donned the question man mantle, Rene Montoya. Come on. Rene, of course, we all know her, got her big, she was first introduced in the, the Batman animated series. And then of course, as mostly like all those characters from that series that didn't, they got, they transitioned into the, the canon universe of comics. And Renee really found a, a, a following to the point where Renee, sooner or later, we just start seeing Renee, her character development to the point where they gave her Vic Sage's mantle, the question. And I loved, I loved Renee as the question. She was a really good, um, predecessor to, yeah, successor to Vic Sage. Don't get me wrong, I respect and have respect for Vic Sage, the original question, but it's Renee. When people ask me, like, who's your favorite question? I say all the time, Renee Montoya. And Ren Renee Montoya has had a lot of ups and downs, but I've always looked at her as she's a fighter. She, she, she always bounces back but she's a fighter and I respect that. Yes, we have seen Renee Montoya in the DC Extended Universe. Uh, Rosie Perez played her. You know, I'm not gonna really go too deep in that because I do love Rosie Perez, but you know, it, it, it wasn't, I, there was other actors I felt could have played uh, Renee Montoya. See how I rolled that R? Yeah, I gotta roll that. <laughs> so next on the list, of course, guys, is uh, number seven. And of course, number seven, we're going with the third, the third uh, Blue Beetle, Jaime Reyes. Now we all know that Jaime is coming to the DC Extended Universe in a movie. And uh, my man, uh, always try I forget how to pronounce his name but the man who plays Carlos in uh, Cobra Kai is gonna play Jaime Reyes now back in it when he first came here's a little funny story I used to call him Jamie I was calling him Jamie Reyes I'm like but then uh, one of my friends um, who is Hispanic was like no Chris um, it's 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 Jaime you 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 it's it's the I think the J is silent um, or the J sounds differently, and I was like, "Oh, okay." But I like him. I like Jaime. He he he's young, and Marvel and DC ex showcased that. Like here, he has the scarab. He's the second person to really be able to truly master the scarab or be able to use it. You know, uh, Dan Garrett, Dan Garrison, the first Blue Beetle was able to use it. Of course, Ted Cord was never able to activate it, but when he went to High Man, there were times when Ted was kind of being his mentor and things like that. But High Man just had that aspect of being a great character. And I, I always look at it like this: when you got a good supporting cast, they they're going to help the character. And you know, here's High Man with this powerful weapon on his back, and it talks to him. And of course, and then. We just saw his popularity grow. You know, he became a big, lo big. You know, people loved him on Young Justice, and you heard the Scarab really talking and things like that. And unfortunately, live action-wise, they have trashed the character. Can we, we? We all can. 
agree to that. So hopefully this new movie will give him what he needs where he can stamp his approval in live action. Just saying. Number six on the list goes to my second favorite Batman rogue, Bane. Yes, um, Bane is my second favorite Batman rogue. Uh, there's only one that tops him, uh, Mr. Freeze. Um, yeah, you thought I'd say Joker, right? Nope. Anyway, Bane, I think people forget that Bane is Hispanic. He, he's not uh, other nationalities that I've heard. Some, I've heard people say he's, he's Russian. I'm like, wait, where, where did Russian come from? I've heard people say he's... he's uh, Mostly all from Europe. That's where I've always heard people say Europe. He's from, he's from Europe, and I'm like, no, he's he is he is Hispanic. And when we started to see people getting casted, even even when he when he came into the third season of the Batman the animated series, they literally said his, he had a his Hispanic or South American accent. Okay, but what really makes me love Bane is what he's not just brawn. He's brains. And Gail Simone used him brilliantly, really explored that in Secret Six. Um, I really loved how Gail made this character more than what people just saw. He's just the brute, the, the or just quote unquote, he's the guy that broke the bat, you know? And yeah, he will always be that, but he is a hell of a tactician. He's got brains, he's got, he's got the brawn. And, one thing people also need to understand, he doesn't need the venom. He's a powerful man without it. The venom just, I guess you could say, soups up his already natural imposing strength. But Bane is a hell of a character and we have seen him twice live action. First time he was just the big, dumb muscle. Boom. Oh. Remember that? And of course, Tom Hardy gave us a very more regal expression of Bane. Not bad, but it it can be improved. There we go. That's the way I look at it. Next on the list, number five, we move on to is, of course, another character that is about to make her debut in the MCU. And that character is none other than America Chavez. The, I think she is the second person to use the Miss America uh, mantle uh, because there was the original from the Golden Age. Then there was I believe, America Chavez. And then there was another uh, Miss America that was during the Marvel uh, 50 state initiative when every state in the Marvel universe had a super team the the uh, Philadelphia's had a uh, Philadelphia had a team called Pennsylvania. They had a team based in Philly called the Libertines, and this Miss America was similar, basically Supergirl. She was strong. She was invulnerable. She wore a red, white, and blue like dress, uh, but they never really did any more with those characters, which kind of sucked. But America Chavez is definitely has risen to the occasion. She, she became a fan favorite, and just the fact that she's not from the original 616 universe, her parents, or you know, everything like, it's just cool. We're gonna see her in Doctor Strange number two. Um, so we're gonna see America. Hopefully we see the actress wearing that classic look of the, the, the denim jacket with the hoodie, the, uh, you know, the red, white, and blue, and the short shorts, and long boots, and things like that. It's an easy look, it, it could work. Uh, next up on the list, of course, is uh, number four, Miles Morales. I mean, yeah, uh, Miles, the black Tino Spider-Man who first debuted in the Ultimate lineup, which is that universe, is that Earth is called Earth 1610, and Miles replaced the then deceased Peter Parker in that universe. And we saw Miles 
grow and become this new Spider-Man. Um, I thought he was cool. I, I liked the costume and everything like that. But then, because of his popularity, and since Marvel wasn't going to do any nothing more with the Ultimate Universe, which kind of sucked, they said, okay, we're going to incorporate him into the main continuity universe, the 6, 616 universe, and there you go. And then, of course, Miles just grew there. He got bitter. He got better, excuse me. Um, he Peter helped mentor him some, some mentor him sometime. Um, he started hanging around with other Spider characters, uh, learning from them, and growing, becoming what he is now. He's a he was an Avenger for, at one point. Now he's a champion. Um, Miles has done it all. He, I mean, he had a hit movie. I mean, he's, he has truly gained his respect in the comic book world. As you all know, he's created by Brian Michael Bendis. Uh, but yeah, he is half black, half Puerto Rican. Um, and I think people forget that sometimes. Like, yes, he is Hispanic. You got to give that to him. Yes, he's, he's, all, he's black, yes, but he's also Hispanic. Um, his, his mother and his father. And of course, you know, he has Uncle Aaron. Next on the list, of course, is number three. We're doing number three. And who is this character? Another Afro-Latina character who I feel was just poorly showcased live action and I actually like the actress but wrong character wrong actress and that character is none other than the mutant the X-Men Cecilia Reyes um Dr. Cecilia Reyes that's right she is a doctor and when Marvel uses Cecilia they use her right um I like the fact that her mutant powers are she can form shields around her and around other people. It's a real cool defensive, she's more of a defensive uh, power, which is cool. Nothing wrong with being defense. What's what's that saying? A good, good offense needs good defense too. Or something like that. I'm bucking on it. But anyway, the point is guys, Cecilia is a character that I feel doesn't get enough credit that she de deserves. Uh, like I said before, she is Afro-Latino, meaning one of her, she had her parents is, has African descent in her, and unfortunately, we got to see her live action, and they fucked the character up, uh, in my opinion. I, that's why I did not support that movie. And the actress who played her, I like the actress, but she is not... She was not Cecilia. And when are you guys gonna, when are you Hollywood gonna get it right? And it's not just her. You fucked up on Sunspot. He's Afro Brazilian. He's not just what y'all make him out to be. It's like. But Cecilia, good. And I like her relationship that she, she has with Gambit. Like, that's another person. Gambit has a lot of trust. And number two on the list, number two. Who could be number two, guys? Well, let me explain to you who number two is. None other than the Spider-Man of the 2099 universe, Miguel O'Hare. You didn't think I have him on the list, did you? Hmm? I hope you didn't because he is. Miguel O'Hare, thank you, Peter David, for creating this character back in 92. When he first, when the 2099 universe dropped, it was, a, it was, we were wondering like, okay, is this the year 2099 of the Marvel universe? This is what it's gonna look like. You know, you know, they I'll call it Nueva in New York. It was really different. You know, uh, Ultimax and all this other stuff, you know, but Miguel's costume was, you know, he really has no connection. He's not an ancestor of Peter Parker, not an ancestor, a descendant of Peter Parker. 
he's 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 a different character. His powers are somewhat the same, but also different. The costume, that costume is just so amazing. And when Marvel brought him back, they altered the costume with the white and red, and it was just like, yo, that that's beautiful too. We're gonna see a Miguel in the next Into the Spider-Verse. We're definitely gonna see him there. Would I love to see Miguel in live action? Yeah, if they did it right. Um, and, you know, if Marvel was overseeing it and not Sony, but yeah. Um, for, once again, Miguel is another person that shares dual nationalities, uh, but He's still a great character. He's still cool. He's still beloved. Once again, thank you, Peter David, for creating the character. And number one on this list, in honor of National His Hispanic Heritage Month, who is the number one character on this list? That list goes to probably the most underutilized character, or I should say, underutilized lantern. DC, I blame you. That character is my favorite lantern, Kyle motherfucking Rayner. Yes, guys, Kyle is Hispanic. He's half Hispanic, all right? but he is the most underutilized Green Lantern in history. And he has done so much, but like Tim Drake, DC underutilizes him. They don't fuck with this character. And I'm like, why not? You, 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 you always want to shove Hal. And don't get me wrong, I like Hal. Shove how you shove John, you hell you even shove Guy Gardner down our throats. Sure, the new lanterns like Simon Boz and Jessica, yeah, but you shove those other three that I just mentioned down our throats more than Kyle. Kyle is always the background character. Kyle do this, and we don't see him for a while. What has this guy done? To deserve this. Nothing. He is a great character that don't get enough shine. And, and, and to prove it even more, there is no mention of Kyle Rayner in this Green Lantern show that's coming on HBO Max. But they got Guy Gardner. Underutilized. Kyle is my favorite Green Lantern. He has done so much help. He is the true meaning of torchbearer. They don't do anything with him. Why is that? Why? You tell me. Because I got no, I got, there's no excuse to why he doesn't get utilized more. Because it's always about Hal and John. And once again, I love those two. But the fact is, spread the wealth. There are seven, I believe seven, Earthling Green Lanterns. And I know you can't, but the fact is, Kyle should be used more, damn it. And that's all I got to say about that. Hope for it's gone. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the list of uh, this um, to all Latino Hispanics in the world and here in the States, I hope you appreciate this as well as appreciate. Don't forget to always show love to your heritage and be proud of your heritage. And don't be a statistic and always break down those stereotypes. And hopefully soon, my fellow Hispanic geeks, we get to see these characters, more of these characters on screen to be showcased because let's spread the wealth. 
Blacks got it with Black Panther. The Asian geeks got it with Shang-Chi. It's time. It's your time now. I believe. And with that being said, guys, this is my Vernon Kid saying peace and love. Stay tuned. Keep it real. I will see you guys next time. Next time on the Opinion Spot will be another list. And I'll have some help from a good friend. Be there. What is it? Just gonna have to find out. <laughs>